Hey guys, Marshmallow Trump here, back with another Clash mini video, and I did it again, I'm in the top 1000 yet again, um, because I did actually end up falling out, so I'm 965th with 398 trophies, however if you actually look, I'm joint 953rd, because everyone up to that has the same amount of trophies, and um, here um uh, sk31 i see you in the comments requested uh that i do a countess deck and apparently according to them the countess got buffed and from what i've been playing it does seem stronger than what i last played it well when i last played the character so i actually have two decks um this one is not quite as good or at least i don't think so but uh, they've given me both a bit of a win streak, and they both got me back into the top 1,000 players. Uh, I'm going to turn off ranked, and um, I'm going to go into Rumble. So, the first deck, we have the Countess, the Knight, the Mega Knight, the Archer, the Miner, and the Skeleton Giant. In this deck, replaceable cards are the Archer. You can have that as the Wizard or the Ice Wizard, or the Spear Goblin. Any of these two-cost ranged attackers are great. Um, to be honest, I've cycled through all of them in using this deck. The Archer is pretty fun, as it can counter uh, multiple ranged units at once. Um, and for the sake of the video, although it's not necessarily the best, I think either the Wizard or Spear Goblin's the best, um, I want to give her a bit of limelight, because... It seems that not many people enjoy using her, so, uh, you know, I thought I'd give us a bit of appreciation and put her in the deck for the video. So, uh, this is the deck that I'm doing, um, and the idea behind it is that you... It's mainly for Rumble, this deck, because, um, basically with Rumble, as the rounds progress, you end up getting a very large amount of Elixir, and... This deck is quite costly, so your early rounds you may lose, but in Rumble, you are able to lose one round early on, so that is fine. Now this is horrible, because that minor placement was bang on my archer. However, the Countess should be able to assist, there we go. The Skeleton Giant, mm, this might not go too well, because that Shield Maiden is level 5. Yeah, this Shield Maiden being level 5 is a big pain, actually, because... Uh, that's way too overleveled. Anyway, uh, the Countess, as you can see, is putting in a lot of work, doing a lot of damage, even though the Shield Maiden's practically invincible. There's no way I was going to win that, but yeah, it is what it is. This guy's literally running level 5 Shield Maiden. Anyway, the tactic for this deck is that you want to have a lot of tank units, such as Skeleton Giant, Mega Knight, the Knight. Um, ideally low cost, that's why I've gone for a 4, a 3, and a 2 cost tank. And, um, what you basically want to do is just get the attention on these three tanks, whilst the Countess does the, uh, dash attack, regains health, stays in the fight, and does a lot of damage. Because, as you can see, uh, the Knight can tank a lot when he's got his shield up, the... Uh, Mega Knight, when he's in play, he can tank a lot, but he also has his stun ability, which is super useful. And um, the Skeleton Giant drops a massive bomb on death. So they all have unique gimmicks. There you go, that was against a level 5 Shield Maiden, and I just won with a level 3 Countess. Now if you don't know, when a hero gets to level 5, they get an added ability, which makes them even stronger than your average hero. So for a level 3 Countess to beat that is pretty impressive. So here we go, we've got a lineup of our three tanks. You can shuffle them around, they don't have to be this order. Hell, they don't even all have to be on the same line. But I, I don't know, I'm just doing it for the video. Um, and yeah, these, these gimmicks combined for a very, oh, the minor placements, these guys again are so lucky. Very formidable um, team. As the bomb's done the damage, the Mega Knight's done the stun, and now the Countess is putting in work. Hopefully, the Battle Healer, there we go, the Battle Healer is out of commission. And now it's just my Countess versus a level 5 Shield Maiden, which hopefully... There we go! Everyone 
for some reason, has level 5 Shield Maiden, and I just beat two of them with the Countess. This is the new buffed Countess. I think they increased the, uh, either the rate in which he, she does the dashes, or the damage from the dashes. I, all I know is that the dashes feel a lot stronger. So, uh, this is really neat, actually. I am going to protect the archer with the knight. Uh, move the countess over to this side. Protect the countess with the mega knight. Because you want the skeleton giant to die. Sure, you want him to tank to save your countess. But at the same time, the death bomb does a lot of damage to a lot of troops. So, that unit dying is beneficial. Nice, the miner took out their countess before it could dash away. This game is in the bag. This is in the bag. Here we go, hopefully the stun wears off soon, the Mega Knight level up stun is amazingly long. But there we go, we still got two tanks on the field, Countess and the Archer, beating a enemy Countess. And for my final round, I'm going against a Shield Maiden. As you can see, the deck is getting better as we progress through the tournament because of how costly it is. Now that we are getting high Elixir, most decks don't really improve that much. Um after the initial group stages, but this deck after group stages just gets so strong. So if you are able to stall out, then you are sorted. Because uh, something weird with this Countess deck is that it's actually really good at stalling until overtime. And because you're running tanks, a lot of them can outlast enemy heroes, and you might actually end up winning through overtime, even though Countess is a very fast-paced character. There we go, the Mega Knight stun, stop the Shield Maiden. I, I'm not sure, but that did look like level 5 again. And there we go. That is the championship. That is the Countess deck. Very, very strong. So, that was the deck. I hope you enjoyed it. The other alteration that I was going to talk about, I'm not going to play, but uh, I was going to talk about, is um, more for... Oh no, oops. <laughs> More for Jewel. Uh, because I think it's a little cheaper than that. Um, I don't really use it. Even though it's probably better, I like this one a lot. So um, basically, instead of Mega Knight, you have your Pekka. Instead of Archer, you have Dark Goblin. And instead of Skeleton Giant, I think you have Lumberjack. Now, the idea of that deck is to, again, tank, make it so um, your Countess is safe, but instead of the Countess being the one that you want him to keep safe, within that deck variant, you want to keep your Dark Goblin safe, which is very weird, because um, Dark Goblin decks aren't really super strong. But in that alteration... Uh, the way you play it, you use the Countess as a tank almost. Because she gets the plus 3 health on the dashes, and she gets the dashes so often, it allows for her to be quite durable. Uh, I think it's down minor as well, you might actually run Battle Healer. So you're running a lot of tanks that can just keep themselves alive, whilst the Lumberjack gives rage to the Dark Goblin. And the Dark Goblin, if you don't know... Um, can have this thing where bonus can stack infinitely and that bonus is every hit the attack speed is increased so um then you just get like a machine gun of damage that can just shred through enemies now this deck is really good the only downside is it just dies painfully to shield maiden and as you saw there Level 5 Shield Maiden is not a rare occurrence. Even though most people's heroes are around level 2 to 4, level 5 Shield Maiden is very common, and obviously with her reflecting 1 damage back and uh, reducing damage by 1, although Dark Goblin's attacks are super fast, they are 1, and he doesn't have much health, so he just ends up dying himself really fast to Shield Maiden, and that's why I prefer this deck, as you have the Miner, which has uh, 2 damage from the back, which means Shield Maiden takes damage still. Uh, the Mega Knight can stun, stopping her get to the shield. Skeleton Giant has the bomb, which uh, does damage even when she's shielded. 
and the knight, if he's got his own shield up, he won't take reflection damage, and the archer usually won't be fighting the shield maiden because she attacks the furthest back to targets, which are usually Electro Wizard, Magic Archer, uh, and the Ranged Healer. So, that's the deck. I hope you like it. I also hope you like the Dark Goblin variant that I discussed. Um, it's a fun deck to play, the Dark Goblin one, but again, while Shield Maiden is so prominent, I wouldn't recommend it over this one. Hopefully within the gameplay you saw that uh, this one is good. And the Mega Knight, if, you on, uh, if you're on the Electro Valley, you want to be getting the Mega Knight on the Zap spots, which boost the bar. And you want to upgrade him so he gets that super long stun and the increased area of effect if you have them. If it's only one star, that's great. You still want to aim for that. But two stars is also really good. Um, but again, you want your Skeleton Giant to be taken out. And you want your knight and mega knight to be tanking and being able to deal with shield maiden. This deck is almost a <clears throat> shield maiden counter deck. But at the same time it's very sufficient and it can hold its own as you saw when I went against other countess players. And uh, yeah, don't forget archer can be replaced by any two cost ranged attacker. But I quite like using her and she's not bad actually. So with that. Thank you all for watching. Again, uh, if like SK31, you want a mini video or a video on a hero, let me know in the comments. Uh, I love to hear uh, your guys' uh, opinions on the decks. And I also like hearing what you want to see because it lets me know uh, what content to put out first. Anyway, with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Try out this deck. It's a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next one.